I grew up in a Catholic home, um, but only attending church, only for the purpose of catechism. Um, I would see my mom praying pretty often and needed to do the same uh, when I really wanted something. Uh, when I was entering my middle school years, I felt very restricted by my mother's parenting. Um, but just assume that because she grew up in a different country and in a strict household that she didn't know what it was like to be um, a teenager in America. And this is where I began to feel like I knew what was best for me. Um, and from then on, I began doing things according to my will and what I deemed acceptable. Um, this pattern of thinking would follow me into my adult years. I relied heavily on my accomplishments, my earnings, and found security in that. Um, thinking I created this life for myself, I felt deep down that I was a pretty good person, and so in return, these things were seen as a reward for that. I briefly attended a Christian college group in California um, and was baptized when I was 19, merely out of a feeling, and it was not followed up by anything, no time with the Lord, uh, I wasn't reading my Bible, and truth be told, I didn't even know what sanctification was, and thought that perfection was needed, and realized it seemed impossible. Um, uh, it unfortunately was merely just an act, or like you said, a public bath. In my late 20s, I dabbled into self-help books, relying on them heavily, thinking if I changed my mindset, I could tap into my higher self and manifest the life that I wanted, and to only put positive vibes into the universe for, again, things that I deemed would align with what I thought I deserved in life. At the start of the year, in 2023, I thought this was the year where my life changes. This is when it truly begins. I found out that my husband Mark and I were pregnant with our first child, a little boy. My husband received a job transfer to work in Kyle, Texas, and I was so happy to be moving close to family. Love you guys. <laughs> the tag to be away, uh, to be a stay-at-home mom was heavily on my heart. My husband moved out here in the first week of January and began coming to Compass Bible Church and attending life group. I remember having a conversation over the phone with them, saying, you know, you don't have to go to church so much just because my brother and his family go. <laughs> and he simply replied back saying, I'm going because I generally want to be here. I moved out to Texas to join him and settle into our new home before the baby arrived in the month of April. I too began going to church and getting plugged into life group. By attending Sunday sermons, I began to feel a change in my heart. I reevaluated what I wanted, I reevaluated what I wanted our new life to look like. And I knew I wanted it to be with a firm foundation in Jesus. I was wanting to commit my life to Jesus, but inwardly, it was hard for me to let go of control and completely give my life to him. I was going through the motions as if I was saved, thinking I'll fake it till I make it because I genuinely did crave salvation. I attended an exploring compass class with my husband and when it got to the section of do you have salvation, check yes or no, I just couldn't check the yes box. I knew something was holding me back. Sitting in on a baptism shortly after, a friend's testimony gave me the courage to ask my husband if he believed he was saved. And he answered, yes, I do know I'm saved. And it really made me reevaluate what was standing in my way. Close to a week later, after this question, on May 27th, I got the worst news any wife could ever receive. I learned that my husband had passed away in a car accident. I remember thinking, there's no way this could be happening. I remember standing, holding my belly in disbelief and confusion of what my future would look like. Everything I had ever learned about Jesus from my six short weeks of attending church instantly came flooding into my head. I knew that, that at that moment that God had been working in me to bring me closer to him. I knew that that tugging and slow transformation of my heart was preparing me for this very moment. With the weakest heart, I surrendered my life to Jesus. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. I remember saying out loud, 
I feel you and I give you everything my whole life. I knew at that moment that I had nothing standing in my way. No pride, no need to feel like I had to control my future. I had nothing to lose but everything to gain through Jesus Christ. I had a small foundation built up, but that was enough for me to decide to lean on God. I did not know what my future would look like, but I knew that God would be with me no matter what. Psalms 34, 4 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. When I tell you that I silently cried out to God, I felt such peace that me and my baby were going to be okay. Genuinely, I did. I knew this peace was only from the Lord. I continued to give thanks to God because I saw his fingerprints everywhere. Everywhere I looked as I replayed that day, I continued to see God's goodness, protection, and grace in something so tragic. I began looking into God's word. And the more I learned that we could really... The more I learned that we really are undeserving of any blessings on this earth due to our sinful nature, but because of God's love, which was made evident through his son, Jesus Christ, he gave us an opportunity for reconciliation with him because he loved us first. 2 Corinthians 5.19 says that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. I truly believe that. And all of a sudden, scripture started making more sense to me because I finally understood Ephesians 2 8 through 10 for by grace you have been saved through faith God has shown his grace unmerited favor forgiveness that we do not deserve but we see but receive through our faith I thank Jesus for not being done with me for still working in my heart I encourage you to seek Christ I know now very clearly that tomorrow is never promised And I thank God every day for his outpouring of grace on my life. Had we been in that car together, I would not have gone to be with Jesus. I would have been separated from him for eternity because I was too busy letting my pride get in the way. I am thankful that I serve a patient Lord. I am also extremely thankful for what God has revealed to me only a week ago of my husband's salvation because he knew where he stood with God. Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I thank Jesus for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for he is always with me. And through the body of Christ, for they have shown me kindness and grace. I am thankful for my life group and the specific people that God has placed in my life. I am thankful for my brother and sister-in-law for lovingly reminding me to seek God first and always. Experiencing deep loss causes you to have such deep intimacy with Jesus. I relied heavily on God's promise, but knew them to only be true if I turned from my sin and saw out Jesus for everything. Psalm 91 verses 1 through 2 says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. To be in the shadow of something requires being in its close proximity. So if we dwell in God as our shelter, we can abide in his shadow. We can find rest, but we must dwell in him. James 4, 7 through 8. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. God just wants us to rely on him wholeheartedly. Looking back now, I can clearly see that there is a clear difference between believing in Jesus and following Jesus. Only in the latter do we find true purpose and satisfaction. The gospel is enough for my salvation and my sanctification. I may still have sorrow in my heart, but rejoice in what Christ has done for me. Because of Jesus, I no longer live as if there is no tomorrow. I live because there is a tomorrow, an eternity in heaven with my Savior Jesus Christ. My dependency on Jesus has changed drastically since giving my life to him. Within three weeks time span, I took on three different roles. I became a widow, a mother, and most importantly, a daughter of Christ. There was a lot of tears that came from that, tears of sorrow, tears of happiness, and tears of not feeling worthy. But the more I learned about Jesus, the more I became sure of who he is. If Jesus took on all the sin of the world, of the world he, could, he could surely take on my burdens. Even in incomprehensible circumstances, we can still rejoice. I leave you with this final scripture that really has just helped me so much in times of need, and that's Psalms 13, 1 through 6. Lord, how long must I struggle with anguish in my soul? 
with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? Turn and answer me, O Lord my God. Restore the sparkle to my eyes, or I will die. Don't let my enemies gloat, saying, we have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall, but I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is so good to me. It's because of your public proclamation of your faith in Jesus Christ that I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 